by Victoria Jill Science Correspondent, BBC News Image Copyright Jodrell Bank Looming up out of the green Cheshire countryside, listening to deep space, the Lovell Telescope is an icon of science. And while it listens, the third largest radio telescope in the world becomes, for just a few days every summer, a massive, animated art installation. As part of the Bluedo Music and Science Festival at Jodrell Bank, the telescope has now played host to displays devised by Brian Eno and Daito Manabe. The latter developed animated data which the telescope was collecting from space, and beamed it onto the structure. Image Copyright Bluedo Festival Image Caption Tokyo-based artist DJ and programmer Daito Minabe used data that Lovell was gathering from deep space to create an animated light show. This year it will host two specially commissioned projection pieces, one inspired by the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Making artists' work come to life on a big, complicated steel structure has been the task of Pod Blumen, who is in the business of building visual experiences. The first time we did this with a Lovell telescope, we were working with Brian Eno, he told BBC News. The inside of the bowl provided us with a huge screen, so we just projected content at the bowl in hopes that content would work. Image copyright Bluedo Festival image caption The Lovell Telescope takes center stage at the Bluedo Festival for the last two years though, Lovell's 5,000 square meter bowl has been undergoing restoration, which means it has to be kept static and pointed directly upward. As a result, artists and designers are deprived of its huge circular screen, all we had was the superstructure, so we convinced the powers that be that we needed a 3D scan of the whole thing, said Mr. Blumen. The need for that scan dates from when construction first began on Professor Bernard Lovell's Great Telescope in 1952. Even as the structure took shape there were many unsolved engineering problems. Image Copyright Jodrell Bank Center for Astrophysics, the university image caption The construction of what was originally named the Mark I telescope required using racks from battleships to steer the huge dish many ad hoc solutions that allowed the 1,500-ton bowl to be steered with pinpoint accuracy were devised along the way, including the use of racks from battleship gun turrets. Possibly as a result of these swift engineering fixes during construction, there were no accurate technical drawings of the telescope available, we used a LIDAR scan, which essentially shoots lasers at the entire telescope to create an enormously detailed point cloud, a three-dimensional map of the structure, Mr. Blumen explained. Once he and his team had simplified this map, they used it to virtually flatten out the whole structure into a two-dimensional plan, and used that to design the animations that would be projected onto every single strut. Image Copyright University of Manchester Library Image Caption There were no detailed technical drawings available of the Lovell Telescope when the 2D animated plan was remolded back into a 3D telescope, complete with its mapped-on animations. The team could convert that into a scheme of exactly where every projector should be positioned to fill each strut surface with images. Dr. Teresa Anderson, director of the Jodrell Bank Discovery Center, said that ever since she and her team began running cultural events on the site more than a decade ago, the idea of using the Lovell Telescope was something that had absolutely fascinated artists. Image caption Every strut and its position had to be mapped in order for the animation to be accurately projected onto the telescope it's so big, as tall as the clock tower of Big Ben, so it's an amazing edifice as well as a scientific instrument, and once you start thinking about what it's doing, listening to the universe, it becomes even more fascinating, so what does she think Sir Bernard Lovell would have thought of his great scientific achievement becoming a giant light show during a festival he was someone who understood the importance of people feeling connected to science, of bringing the public in and giving them a sense of ownership of the work we do here, said Dr. Anderson. Anderson, so I think he would have really supported it, but he wasn't a fan of popular music, so he might have had earplugs in for the bands, follow Victoria on Twitter.